Hello, welcome to Gary Clark Tech. In these videos, what we're going to do is we're just going to have a look at some of the Symphony Essentials, i.e. the components that you're likely to use in all Symphony projects. And so in this one, we're going to start from the very beginning. We're going to create a project from brand new using the Symphony skeleton. And then we're just going to have a look at routes and controllers. So nice, gentle start. By the end of this, you'll know how to set up a project and how to actually send requests to that project, get responses back. So here is the command. I'm in my sites folder. I'm on a Mac, but you might be using Windows or any other operating system. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this command composer create hyphen project, and then that will use the Symphony skeleton library and then I am simply calling it Symphony Essentials. That will be the name for this video series. So let's hit enter on that. Composer goes away, does what it needs to do very fast these days. And I now have a Composer project called Symphony Essentials. So let's CD into there. And then I'm also gonna open this up in my editor. All right, so I've just opened it up in my editor. I'm using PHP Storm, but you can use whatever you like. I find PHP Storm really good with Symfony stuff, and it also has some Symfony-related uh, configuration which you can use. But we're not going to look at that in this one. Just going to keep life simple, have a look at the folders, and then I'll show you how you can create a controller and how you can route to methods on that controller. So uh, let's just go through the folders one by one. The binary folder, that is for the side of Symfony where you can actually um, create console commands. We're not going to look at it in this one, but uh, frameworks, you can tend to look at them as sort of being two applications, really. You have a side where you can create sort of console commands, and then you have like the web HTTP side, which is more what we're going to be dealing with in this one. Config, so big folder for config, and config in Symfony it's quite a big subject and we are going to touch on some of it in one of these when we have a look at some container configuration. Uh, okay, next, public. So this is our front controller. If you've done my PHP Framework Pro course, you should know about front controllers, but this is basically where you route the request to. And so an incoming request will go through this file first. And what Symfony will do is it will... Um, send all the information it needs to do into this kernel object and then all the routing controllers and basically the whole application will be sort of encapsulated inside of there and all the code which needs to execute will be figured out inside of that object. Now again, we're not going to get into that here. We'll probably touch on that more when we have a look at uh, request and response components. Uh, next, we go into the source folder. And so when you're working on a Symfony project, this is where the majority of the code that you will write is going to live. And in fact, the code that we're going to write today is going to live inside of this source folder. Because as you can see here, there is a folder for controllers. And that is where we're going to put our first controller. Okay, just two more folders to look at. Var, this one is for, um, as you would probably guess, variable files so you'll not often put any of your own code in here what happens with this folder is that simply tends to use it for sort of caching container configuration and other bits of variable data which you can use to make the application a bit more performant uh, then you have the vendor folder so this is all the dependencies just like any php project and then you have an environment variables file might talk about that in another one you have a git ignore file composer json so these are all the dependencies of a symphony skeleton project uh, maybe we'll have another look at this in a different one and then the composer lock which just locks all the dependencies to a particular version but what we're going to have a look at now is we're going to go back and we're going to create our first controller but just before we do that I'm going to spin up a local server. So I can do that by running this command here. So remember how I said that the index.php is the front controller. So when we run up a local PHP server, because I have PHP installed on my machine, uh, any requests will be directed through this file here. So the command is php-s 
localhost colon 8080 so that's the port I'm going to use use whatever you like uh, and then public forward slash index.php so if you have PHP installed on your machine you should be able to run this command and follow along so let's go and run that it's telling, the, telling me that a server has been started up let's just click on this link and so you should see this welcome to symphony 7 and then at the very bottom here it actually gives you a little pointer on where you can go and look up how to create your first page. So if I click on that, this is what we're going to be doing here basically. We're going to create a controller and we're going to create a route. But feel free to also check out the documentation on how to do this. For me, I've done it many times, so I know that I need to go to this folder here. And I'll show you why this folder in a moment. But we're going to create a controller. And I'm going to call it Home Controller. And this is just going to be for like a home page or something like that. And I'll show you one way of routing requests to a method on a controller. So first of all, I'm just going to call this Index. Don't get too hung up on the name at the moment. It's not that important for this. But just know that we're going to use this method in order to handle a request and send back a response. And so here we're going to say we shall return a response and this will be Symfony Component HTTP Foundation. And now what we want to do is route all requests to the base URL to this method, to this handler. The way we do that, or one way of doing that, is by using a route attribute, which looks like this. Now just be careful that you make sure that you bring in the correct route because there are two. If I remove this, there's one for attributes and there's one for annotations, which is the old way of doing it. I'll show you that now. So here, as you can see, we have one for annotations and we have one for attributes. We want to use attributes if you're using PHP 8 or above. Okay, now this first parameter is the path. And so like I say, we want everything which is going to the base URL to be routed to this handler. We're going to refer to this method as a handler. And then optionally, you can give the route a name. And in fact, you can add quite a lot of configuration to this route attribute. Let me show you some of these here. So all of these different parameters, and actually in this documentation here, it explains what all of these are for. Quite a common one is you might want to limit the type of request which can be made to this endpoint. So you might want to say something like this, methods get. And so you could include others like post or whatever you want. Uh, just know that the value needs to be an array. So what we'll do is we'll keep it like this. We'll just say only get requests can be made to this endpoint. Okay, and like I say, what we want to do is return a response. So in this one, we'll keep life simple, but I shall cover request and response in more detail in another Symphony Essential. But here, let's just say return new response and we'll give it a good old hello world. Not hello world, hello world. Okay, which means that if I go back now and refresh this page here, so this is just a request to the base URL for the site, refresh, and you should now see hello world congratulations you've just routed to your first handler now admittedly if you're seeing that for the first time it may seem a little magical the way this works is it's all been configured for us so if we go to config actually and inside of this routes.yaml you should see this configuration here and so basically it's saying that we are using attributes for the routing and that our controllers live at this destination here, source forward slash controller, which as you can see, that is where our controllers live. And they have this namespace app controller. If we look at the home controller, you'll see that it has this namespace of app controller. If I was to go and comment out this configuration here, and we go back to the browser and refresh, as you can see, we're no longer routing that request to that handler on that home controller. Okay, here's another way which you can do your routing. So a lot of the time I'll do it like this and I'll have attributes on my methods. But sometimes you might have a large application and you might want to see 
all your routes all in one place. And so if you want to do that, you can actually do it in this routes.yaml. And so what we'll do here is we'll remove that from there. We shall delete that attribute. And so I've just given it a name here. We've said that the path is this and that we want the handler to be this app controller, home controller. And then you'll see it's separated by two columns and then index, which is the actual name of the method here. So home controller index. And so this will work as well. If we go back to the browser and refresh this, as you can see, we're back to seeing hello world, but we've configured our routing differently. We've done it using this routes.yaml file, which like I say, lives in config. But I'm gonna finish this one off by leaving it in my preferred way of doing it and probably the way that you'll see the most and maybe use the most. I'm just gonna revert everything here. So we're now using this route attribute on the method index in our home controller and our routes.yaml is configured to say this is where our controllers live. So hope you've enjoyed that one. Hope it's helped you to understand how routing controllers work and how to get up and running with a Symfony project. And in the next one, maybe we'll have a look at the responses and also requests. Look forward to it. Of course, understanding the components of Symfony and how they work is crucial, but if you truly want to master Symfony, there's no substitute for building something real and current. And that's exactly what you'll do in the Symfony 7 microservice course. This course doesn't just teach features, it dives deep into the professional application of techniques. So you're gonna get hands-on experience with the skills that matter most in the industry. If you're ready to take your symphony skills to the next level, I invite you to join the course and start building something that showcases your abilities. I'll see you there.